All right. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, so far in this class, Matt, I'm going over this as well too, just so you know. Um, so far in this class, we've only dealt with graphing an equation in slope-intercept form, right? Or I'm sorry, in standard form or in slope-intercept form. Now, the important things that I wanted to go with you guys is when we had something in standard form, you know, we looked at there's a couple different ways to graph this. You could use intercept method, or we could rewrite it into slope-intercept form, right? And we like slope-intercept form because then we could just graph the, the y-intercept in the slope. And what was important about this was when we graphed it, when we graphed the line, using any method, we created a line, right? Where it's just between two points, and that's all you needed for a line, right? Well, now what we're going to be doing is um, graphing quadratics, which are going to form a parabola. Now, one last thing I wanted to uh, go over when solving an equation, we liked slope-intercept form because you just could just find the y-intercept and then use the slope to find another point. We also could use the intercept method. By using the intercept method, you just found the x and the y-intercept and then connected them. But one thing that we didn't really go over because this is something that was more common in Algebra 1 was just choosing table of values, negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. You also just could have used numbers in for x and then plug them in to find the y value, right? Like a table. Like if I said y equals 2x plus 5. To find the points, you could pick numbers for x, plug them into the equation, and then find the value for y. Yes? No? OK. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to start with today is quadratics that are in standard form. All right? and. That is going to be our form that we are going to be dealing with all of our quadratics today when they're in standard form. Now, when we have quadratics that, um, or when we are graphing quadratics, they do not take the shape of a line. Now, what we call their shape is a parabola. Okay? So the parabola can either open down or the parabola can open up. And we're going to discuss the differences you know, really in that. But there's a couple of important things that I want you guys to understand as far as the characteristics of a parabola that are different from a line. First of all, we notice that this line always is going to intersect, unless it's a horizontal or vertical, it intersects the y and the x-axis. Where here, for a parabola, you can see that it can intersect the x-axis the x -axis twice. It can inter or it can access it not at all. And there's actually even another form where it can only access it once. Okay, Just a little FYI. But the main important characteristic that I want you guys to write down is, hey, guys, guys, it's a little too much for doing those problems. When you guys look at these two parabolas, you notice there's, there's these important points over here. And for the parabola, this is what we call the maximum point. And this would become the minimum point. And those are the max and min y values of that parabola. It's very important for you guys to understand that these are the max and the min values. This parabola does not go any higher than that point, right? This, point, this um, parabola does not have any point lower than the minimum point. And both of these points are what we call the vertex. So I will be using that vocabulary. So it's very important for you guys to know the vocabulary that we're going to be talking about. So the vertex is going to be your max or your min point. The next thing is, if you guys in from geometry, um, we talked about symmetry, symmetry of shapes. And now we're going to look at symmetry of an equation, of a graph. And what I want you guys to understand is that parabolas have a line of symmetry. And that line of symmetry goes right through the vertex. And we call that line of symmetry the axis of symmetry. OK? Now, so when we're going to learn on graphing, um, we need to, there's a couple things that we're going to um, do first. And one thing I want you guys to understand is when graphing, we need, we're, first thing we're going to want to do is identify the axis symmetry. Now, what I want you to understand is the axis symmetry is a vertical line. Remember when we were graphing, we had like, remember when we had to graph x equals 3? Right? Why was, so all you did was you went over to 3, and then you graphed a vertical line, right? 
So notice that the axes of symmetries are vertical lines. So the first thing we're going to do is graph the axis of symmetry. Or at least identify the axis. When we're graphing, we're going to graph and identify the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. Okay, Where your a, b, and c come from over here. It's opposite of b divided by 2a. Okay. So we identified the axis symmetry. Now, what I, that's going to give you the x value of your line, but it's also going to give you the x value of your coordinate for your vertex. Now, the next thing is important is going to be the vertex. And vertex can be can be a little bit easier understood if I was going to use a function instead of an equation. All right, and that's going to be from my um, description here, or for my vertex. So the vertex has the, the x value of opposite of b divided by 2a. The y value is when you plug in the x value in for x and solve for f of x, or your y value. So it's going to be f of opposite of b divided by 2a. And let me kind of give you an example to kind of where that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> da, 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 da. If you guys had like f of x equals 3, and I set or equals 3x minus 5. If I said I wanted to graph that, what you do is you plug in those points, right? So by finding the axis symmetry, I find the x value. So to find the y value, what I simply do is do f of 3 equals 3 times 3 minus 5, which equals 4. And that's where the y value comes in. Does that make sense? So to find the vertex, you take, the x, you take the axis of symmetry, which is your x value, and then you plug it into your equation of your quadratic to find the y value. All right? And that's basically what we're going to be doing um, when we're dealing with graphing. Now, a couple other things to do. That's just how you find the axis of symmetry in the vertex. But how are you going to find your graph? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if we're looking into graphing, when we graph a line, I'll just use these two. When we graph a line, we only needed two points, right? So let's say I find those two points. Well, that's not enough for me to show what my axis symmetry or what my graph looks like, right? So what we're going to do is, is we're going to use the axis symmetry. So once I find my vertex, so I have a vertex. Let's say my vertex is 3, 5. Then what I'm going to do is pick two points, either to the right or to the left. And you can pick any two points. You could say like 2 and 1. And you figure out what those other two points are. So you just randomly pick you know, two points to the right of your vertex. You pick those two points, and let's say it becomes 7 and 10, whatever. So that now still only gives you, though, half of a parabola. So to find the other two, what we use is we use the axis symmetry to reflect our points over the axis of symmetry to continue our graph. Everybody kind of see how I did that? Kind of? That's what it Let's go through an example. It'll probably make a little bit more sense. Renee.